which trades on the Canadian Stock Exchange under the symbol KUYA. Joining me today is Vice President of Exploration, David Lewis. David, thank you for coming on the show today. Yeah, thanks very much, Megan. Really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Absolutely. And for our listeners who may be new to the Kuya story, uh, could you start by giving us a brief introduction to the company? Sure, yeah. So we're, we're a silver-focused exploration company. We've got two major operations. One of them is in Peru. Uh, the second one, which I'm mostly working on, is in Northern Ontario, Canada, um, in the uh, historic silver camp uh, in the Cobalt, Ontario uh, area up in northeastern Ontario. Um, and with this area, I mean, we've, we've, I think we've made some great strides in the last couple of years. I mean, we've been active here since 2021. Um, I've, I actually predate the project just by a couple of years with the previous company. Um, but one thing that really that I'm really interested here is that we've we've managed to use a new exploration model and I think uh, made some great strides with uh, with the work we've done here in Cobalt. Excellent. And yesterday, Kuya Silver announced your latest results from the Silver Kings project. Before we discuss those, could you walk us through this phase of exploration for the company and what the focus was as you'd look to advance a number of high priority targets? Yeah, for sure. No, thanks. Um, so we've got a pretty good size uh, land package. I think we've got about 130 square kilometers up in, in the main Cobalt camp. And we've got uh, our Air Geod and Campbell Crawford up in the northeastern or the northwestern part of the project near the old historic camp. And a second uh, uh, area called Frontier Northwest down in the old Silver Center mining camp. Um, the, the goal with this project um, this year I mean, it's a drilling project. We, we broke it out into different phases. Part of it was looking for new grassroots discoveries in untested areas. Um, one of these areas was our frontier Northwest target where we actually put some drill holes in and confirmed some of the major results that we had on surface. And I was extremely proud of that result. Um, we did some drilling up in our air geod target, which is uh, moderately advanced um, and then followed up with our Campbell Crawford target. And this is where back in 2023, we made some very, very high grade discoveries in a grassroots discovery. Um, so that one was the focus of a lot of our drilling here for the last um, for the last phase of this project. The drill is still up there on site and it's still turning as we speak here right now. All right. Um, in the release, the company announced your latest set of results from the Campbell Crawford target. Can you provide an overview of some of the results from this release and their significance in your overall understanding of the mineralization in this area of the project? Yeah, for sure. And, and thanks again. Um, I want to just talk about some of the, the grades that we hit. So a lot of the drilling that we did here, um, we knew that there was two major veins in the area. One's called Matt that we've named McNamara um, and one's called Angus. And they're basically parallel structures running east west and they're 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 vertically dipping structures. Um, the problem is that when we're drilling these um, we can only drill one of these targets effectively at a time. We've never actually tried hitting this uh, McNamara vein here whatsoever. And so even though the grades are low, um, I mean, 60 grams silver and 0.28% cobalt, the silver is not that interesting, but it shows beyond any shred of a doubt, this is a mineralized system and it looks identical to the Angus vein. We just need to figure out where the uh, blowout zones within this system are. Um, so that was hole 20, 21, and 22. Hole 23 and 24, we were really targeting uh, a follow-up, sort of a fan structure um, off our main high-grade intercepts from our Angus vein in 2023. Um, and we stepped out on fairly tight centers. Um, but we hit some pretty significant mineralization that I'm really interested in talking about. Um, but we hit not only the vein, but we hit a pretty wide halo zone. And this is in 100% an analogy of the camp as well. We're hitting cobalt on the extremities and then a high-grade silver heart. And so where we've got the, the Angus vein here in particular, in hole 23, we hit 1750 grams per ton um, silver just within within that interval. And very, very interestingly, there's almost no cobalt associated with it whatsoever. But when you spread out from the main silver heart, you get this cobalt mineralization kicking in. And for those that followed up on our Frontier Northwest target, I see the exact same thing at Frontier where we're, we're hitting the cobalt. We just need to get a little bit tighter and hit the, the high grade silver. Um, the other thing I find really interesting here is looking at it from a grade times width standpoint. Um, yes, our highest grade hit was our whole 23 SK08 back in, in 2023. Um, but our whole 13 from 2023 and our whole 31, we had grade width of about 6,000 and 5,000. And we're getting very similar numbers in that um, in some of these other veins that we've pierced here as well. So I'm really, really excited about that. 
And then with this photograph here, so again, hole 20 and 21, this is the McNamara vein. We'd never actually tested this one below a depth uh, before, and so I'm very interested to see the mineralization. But the hole, or the intersection hole 24SK23, there's silver caught up within that white calcite there, and that's almost pure silver that we're seeing there. And then there's a whole series of little fractures cutting through the core here as well. We talked about this even back in 2023, but that's that uh, stringer zone or fracture fill mineralization here. And it's bulking out the width of this vein beautifully, which is great. And then another thing that we hit here in hole 24 is we hit two, two veins. And I'm not clear whether it's one vein that we hit twice or two separate veins. It could be either or at this point. We don't have a firm answer. Um, but there's a really, really good silver cobalt core to these veins. And again, we're seeing sort of a wider halo of mineralization spread out around them. So I'm really, really excited about that. Now, the discovery of ladder veins at the Campbell Crawford target is a key development. Uh, for our audience, can you discuss the significance of this discovery as you look towards the future of the target? Yeah, so look, um, from an exploration standpoint, um, if you want to start building up a deposit, um, you, you're going to form it through fluids passing through the rock, especially in this hydrothermal style of deposit like what we've got here. Um, and you need two things for that. One of them is you need a source of the metals. And as far as I'm concerned, hitting this high grade silver and cobalt, we've got a source for the metals. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this mineralization. But the other thing is, from the standpoint of, of an economic discovery, you need to have some sort of a trap to, to actually sort of tighten in and focus these fluids and concentrate the mineralization. And that's where this flexure zone here with these ladder veins is hugely important because um, this whole thing, if you picture it in terms of uh, a damaged corridor here, um, the, the example that I would give is maybe fracking in oil or water well drilling. If you sink a drill hole and you're trying to build a water well, um, but you don't frack the rocks or fracture the rocks at depth, you might get a little bit of fluid flow, but if you then fracture them, break them open, you're going to get a lot more volume of, of water that can come through and you're going to have a lot higher flow rate. And it's the same thing with this plumbing system here too. Um, so it, it's basically an example of a mineralized fracture system. Um, the one beauty with this system is that when the fluids came through, um, they would have sealed up the system as well. So it's a, it's a nice little trap. Um, but I'm very, very excited about this. The other feature of this that's very, very interesting from my standpoint is that if you look at it from the diagram there, you know, we drew it in and in, in, uh, deliberately like this, but it's forming a cylinder. And yeah, we've got it defined between about 30 meters and 40 meters, but we've defined it at depth down to about 20 meters. But historically speaking, these vein systems went for up to about 100 meters below the surface. And so we don't know how deep this is. We've never tested it below depth. But we're starting to get a really good idea on this, the so-called plunge of this mineralization. And so we should be able to target up and follow up on these shoots here going forward. In the release, the company mentioned the drilling is ongoing. Can you provide an overview of the strategy for these next set of drill holes at Campbell Crawford? Yeah, so look, with a lot of the drilling that we've done, I mean, we've put we've put a significant number of, uh, of drill holes into this target here at this point. Um, but we're looking at an east-west structure um, and uh, most of our drill holes were generally trending either north or south. And so we hadn't really picked up on these ladder vein structures here beforehand. Um, so now what we're doing is we're targeting from the western side of this. We're basically, if we've got the two veins that are a corridor, we're putting drill holes straight down the center of them, trying to pick up these ladder veins, trying to see how many of them there are, trying to get an, an idea of the grade. Because I mean, right now we've hit one or two. Um, but we don't know how many there are here whatsoever. Um, we do know that the one that we hit seems to be localized with this flexure in the Angus vein. Um, and that's that's obviously part of the control on this zone. Um, but we're very, very, very suspicious that there's a second um, flexure in this vein on the McNamara vein. And it could be that between these two flexure zones, we've got a whole series of these veins. And so the other thing I want to just mention here is that the grade that we had between the, the two ladder veins in hole 24 was very, very similar, um, meaning that the entire panel could be mineralized fairly similarly. Whereas these east-west veins that we've got here, namely Angus and McNamara, it seems that we're forming a really good high-grade shoot along it, but it turns out that the ladder veins might be just as important or even more so, whether or not they're higher grade or not, just because we can now bulk up the mineralization with this. Mm -hmm. 
Now that the company has an understanding of mineralization at Campbell Crawford, could you touch on any additional exploration targets that could be tested in this area? Yeah, so um, this, this schematic here on the left is just, it's a projected to surface vein intersection map of these, these two flexure zones here. Um, but then the one on the right is a geophysical survey that we did back in, in uh, earlier this year. Um, but it showed really clearly that there's a whole series of these magnetic lows, and it's the second vertical derivative, but it's these blue zones here, and the vein plots beautifully within one of these lows. Um, and also the orientation of these, these, um, these mag lows really matches up well with the flexure zone. So if you've got a panel of these veins, it could be that you've got a whole series of these sort of strung out like a string of pearls. So one, two, three, four, five. So um, we could have a whole series of these high grade shoots along a long trend here. And by the way, everything where we've got the geophysical maps here, this is our property. So um, none of these other ones have been tested with any detail here whatsoever. And I'm really looking forward to to putting some drill holes into those in some future work here. Because if we've got one high grade shoot within, within the flexure that we're now starting to define, um, it could be that we've got five. And then if we've got um, some that are sort of a cross trend as opposed to just a long trend, you could bulk this property up very nicely. And, you know, one thing I just want to mention about the cobalt camp, and for those that are questioning, you know, any of the, the, the size of these deposits, just keep in mind that the average grade in this camp is at least 10 times higher than most other deposits in the world. But the flip side is that the grade or that the tonnage might be substantially lower. But you know, even so, if you're balancing grade versus tonnage, if you have high grade, you can make a very, very economic deposit with small tonnage um, just based on the overall density of silver. Thank you, David. After a few years of exploration now at Silver Kings, can you wrap things up with what really excites you about the progress the company has made in the historic world-class mining camp? Yeah, absolutely. No, thanks very much. Look, um, I think that uh, the work that Kuya Silver has done here in the last couple of years, um, we've put forward a new structural model that's completely different from the previous uh, uh, exploration model, and it's got huge implications for new targets. Um, it, I mean, the Campbell Crawford zone in particular, we wouldn't have drilled this back with the old uh, the old models. Um, with our new structural understanding of the area, this this is one of the ones that was opened up, and I see that we've got a bunch of other targets that are similar in 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 uh, their early stage concept targets. But at the same time, that's exactly what Campbell Crawford was here two years ago. Um, so I'm really excited and I've got a shout out to my team here that I think we're all doing great work and um, I look forward to, to continuing uh, to see if we can make some more discoveries and resurrect an old mining camp here a little bit. If, if you don't mind, um, I'd love to, to show a little bit of the modeling that we've done here, just for a little bit of flavor for, for, what, we've, for what we've seen. So this is our surface area at Campbell Crawford and Air Geod right through here. And I just wanted to um, bend this model here a little bit. Um, the red on surface was the, the veins. Now, this is the bulk of the Nipsing dye base below. And the veins on surface actually match up with these ones here. And what we've got here is a style, something like this. But I really want to emphasize that you know, the blowout zones within within the mineralization are happening exactly where these flexures and these bends are. And this is the, the vein that we've got uh, modeled here. Uh, we're tentatively calling it the alpha vein here, whether that name sticks or not. I mean, if there's a whole series, then it might not. But that's where it sits, and it sits right between these flexed zones here. Um, but this is really what I mean with the, the plunge of mineralization. It seems to be shooting down here like this.